Barry Wimbolt here to tell you why I think online training is a winner if you want to study formally or to pick up some new skills. My area is personal development and I think this modality is particularly effective for personal change and growth. The first thing I'd say about um, online learning is that these, are, these benefits are really wide ranging and they reach audiences that otherwise couldn't be reached because of course you can take an online course anywhere in your home on the commute and so forth so they're great for developing new skills and interests it's really flexible as a medium of course because of the time the the balance and so forth it's low cost or no cost i'm going to tell you about that it gives you access worldwide to expertise people who are willing to share and ready to share their information with you and their and their skills and it offers an unlimited range of new topics of course so let's start with skills and interest now Online learning is, is really gaining traction these days, particularly in the business sphere where a lot of organizations are using it in preference to sending people out for training. There are a number of positive reasons for this. One is that you can do it in bite-sized chunks. You can do it without leading, leaving your desk. And actually, I've been a trainer for about 30 years now, standing in a room five or six hours at a time, hammering home a, a broad message, giving loads of content, loads of detail, engaging people with practical exercises and so forth. But I'm under no illusions that a lot of that stuff just doesn't stick. Whereas when you do a five minute video exercise, for example, or watch a short lecture online, you're far more likely to absorb and retain the information and you can come back to it at any time. A second point is learning is really good for you. It's good for our mental health and well-being. It stimulates the intellect. It keeps you engaged. And there's a lot of evidence now about how doing things beyond just the rather meaningless work that a lot of us have to do in our daily lives, because we don't produce a lot of stuff these days, doing things with your mind and, and, and with your hands if you're learning a practical skill is very beneficial to you. Obviously, it's useful for career and personal development, but let's not skate over that too quickly because by personal development, I mean growth. I mean individual growth. It's what we're put on earth to do. We're going to grow through our lives, through our own curiosity, through our own sense of initiative and learning a skill, taking up a course, whether it's playing the guitar, gardening, angling, fishing or or something else more uh, academic. It may be high finance or it may be philosophy, psychology. It doesn't really matter. But all of these things help to engage the intellect. And we know that has a definite impact on one's sense of self, one sense of well-being. And using the mind like that obviously keeps it alert and active. So it keeps you interested and it makes you more interesting. So uh, never worry again about having nothing to say. Of course, the idea is not to bore people with your pet topic, but there's no doubt that continuing education benefits us in all sorts of ways. And it is stimulating and absorbing. And what do I mean by that? Well, it stimulates the mind, as I've just said. But every time we get absorbed in something, drawn into a subject, fascinated, curious, engaged, it's actually helping us act in a way that is producing the antidote to stress. It's actually switching on the relaxation response, engagement, inner focus. These things are something we desperately need. And since many people lead such stressful lives these days, being able to switch off and get lost in a short course on a topic that fascinates or inspires you is, of course, very beneficial in ways that don't just involve the mind and your understanding of the subject. And finally, on this point about skills and interests, it's personal to you. It's your own journey. You can tailor an online course any way you want to do it. You can take uh, an in-depth view of a topic. You can skate across the topic. You can hurry through the course and get an overview. If it interests you, you can come back and explore it more thoroughly. These courses are there for a lifetime as a general rule. Once you've engaged in the course, once you've bought it, you've got access to it. And of course, you can revisit these videos as often as you like. So that's a really useful way of absorbing information and making it your own. I've touched on flexibility. Of course, flexibility is one of the chief attractions of online learning. You can follow a course on your, on your handset, on your mobile phone, on your 
a tablet, on your laptop, whatever it happens to be, or of course on a desktop as I'm presenting it here. But also, you can download some of the information, you can read it on your commute, you can listen to a podcast on your commute, so you can make use of your downtime. You might like to study with a buddy, study with a friend, study with a group even. Uh, what about getting a group together like a, a, as you would with a, a book club, for example, to study a particular topic? One thing we do know about online learning is it is tremendously enriched by engagement with others. So most courses, and mine certainly have this, have some sort of forum arrangement so you can engage with other students. You can contact the lecturer, the trainer, whatever the person happens to be calling themselves, if you so wish during the course, if there are any points you don't fully understand or anything like that. Your own pace and style, it goes without saying. Maybe you want to do it in short bite-sized chunks. Maybe you want to devote a day to your course from time to time. Perhaps you want to take it with you on holiday, whatever it happens to be. And you can revisit the material as often as you like. Now, let me talk about cost for a moment. Low cost, no cost. Low cost versus no cost, I might say, because there's a lot of information out there on the web. And people sometimes have said to me, well, why would I pay for a course when I can get it all free on YouTube? Well, yes, that's a logical answer. I think both are valid, though. I very often go on to YouTube or a similar platform to look for topic, a topic that interests me before committing to a more formal course of study, just to get a bit of a refresher or a bit of an oversight, an overview of a particular topic. You can use paid courses to suit your budget. Uh, they have the advantage, of course, when you're, when you're working with curated and carefully selected materials, such as that which I present or any other presenter presents in their courses. Of course, it has attached to it specific learning outcomes, which is not generally something you get by uh, scooting around the web and, and picking things at random. Personally, I'd recommend both, and I do recommend both on my courses. I'd say study the course, follow the lessons at a, at a pace that suits you, do the exercises, read the downloads if they're relevant, check on further reading, but also look around for other points of view. One very important aspect of learning, and I've always said this in all my training, whether it was uh, during university courses I was teaching or in my uh, corporate training that I presented for many years, I always encourage people to, as I call it, look over the fence. Check around. Don't just take my word for it. Check on what other people think. Form your own opinions. Get a balanced view. It's a, it's a very, very important part of learning. Comparing, contrasting, uh, discussing, group work, and so forth. And all of these things can be created in your own space, your own time, and in a way that suits you. So in other words, it's kind of blended learning. The practical exercises are easy to put into practice because you've got a short lesson, five minutes, six minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Most of mine are in the area of five or six minutes, or that's what I aim for. Not with something like this, of course. You can hear I'm rattling through this because I want to make it short. I know that you want to get to the point. You don't probably want to spend an hour doing this. So I'd like to get through it in 15 or 20 minutes max. But it's easy to put into practice because you watch a short video, have a demonstration of some sort, and then there's usually an associated download or exercise or something you can practice. You can go away straight away and practice the skill, whatever it happens to be. And of course, you always have access to expert guidance and support from the lecturer. That's me in this case. You can email me, you can uh, even Skype me if you like. You send me an email, we'll set up a Skype conversation. I aim to give the same sort of support to students that I gave during my years as a university lecturer. Very important, very important part of the process because maybe I don't make myself perfectly clear, perhaps I've missed something, perhaps you need something explained in a certain way. And it's important for me as the lecturer to know as well because that helps tune my material and improve what I'm doing. Feedback, discussion, Q&A with the presenter, very important part of online learning. By the way, it also gets called e-learning, and I sometimes refer to that, but uh, tends to be the more usual business term for it. Um, I tend to use online learning most of the time, but if you hear me say e-learning, I mean the same thing. Now, how about engagement and enthusiasm? Well, I'm sure you wouldn't want to do something you weren't engaged and enthusiastic about it. 
obviously you've got a pool of trainer expertise worldwide with the web. So you don't have to restrict yourself to one person. Try several courses, do the free preview lectures, see if the guy or the woman, the person presenting the course actually appeals to you. Uh, it's gone way past geeks in badly lit bedrooms these days. You've actually got some really professionally produced videos out there and they're very easy to follow. But that doesn't mean that a presenter's style is right for you. You may need to find somebody you feel comfortable with and that's an advantage again over classroom training. You haven't got to put up with the presenter if you don't particularly click with them, if what they're saying or how they're saying it doesn't gel with you. Personal growth, of course, is why we're here on Earth, as I've said. It's a, an important part of the lifelong learning model. And by the way, that's what we do these days. Those are the old days where we would go to school, then college, and learning in a, in a formal setting was something we did earlier in our lives. And then we probably didn't do much more of it unless we went into a very advanced academic training. Well, nowadays, particularly with this fast moving world, with technology, with new policies, rules, procedures, and methodologies coming out all the time, something like on learning, online learning really fills the gap because it means up-to-date information can be presented as you need to grow your knowledge base. So it builds your expertise. It also helps you to build your character because there's nothing like expert knowledge, developing expert knowledge in yourself to build confidence and self-esteem. So it adds to both those things. And of course, it's future oriented, it's forward looking. So that's another good viewpoint in life to hold from a psychological perspective. I mean, it's good to be looking forward to what we're going to do. We hear a lot these days about living in the present. And of course, that's very important. But we all need some sort of aim, some sort of plan, some sort of uh, something that excites us and enthusiasts, enthuses us and carries us forward. So I've rounded up four of the five great wins I've been talking about. The fifth one is that there's an unlimited range of new topics. They're coming online all the time. There is literally, quite literally, no limit to the range of topics you can study. Another important point about this, of course, is you don't have to go through any hoops or have any particular level of academic attainment in order to complete an online course, in order to sign up for an online course. Most of them, you just pay your money, take your choice and get on with it. Or if it's a free course and some of mine are free, then you just sign up and launch into the course at your own pace and in your own time. It used to be quite daunting. I can remember during my training and my early academic work that it was quite a hurdle to get over that question of entry criteria for, for a particular course. Whereas that doesn't really, it's not the same now. If you're not taking a university course, it's not the same. And indeed, if you want to take a university course or you want to apply for a certain type of job, having these qualifications under your belt, one or two of these courses can be hugely beneficial to you. If you can imagine it, you can do it, whether it's playing the piano, playing the guitar, learning an instrument, yoga, judo, whatever it happens to be, there's somebody out there ready to share the knowledge with you. And discovery is limitless. And discovery, folks, discovery, curiosity, great for the human spirit. It's what keeps us alive. It's what keeps us energized. Very, very important aspect of online learning of being engaged in a topic is what it does for you psychologically. Not to mention, as I've quite obviously transmitted, I hope, the joy of learning. And I genuinely do love learning things. I don't learn for learning's sake. I learn because I want to apply new skills, ideas, and so forth. So the joy of learning, never underestimate the importance of that. How many people have come back to education having had negative experiences in their early lives only to discover when they're more mature that actually they make a whole different use of that learning experience and they really learn to love learning. So over to you on that score. In summary, then, you can learn new skills with an online course. You can do it any time. It's completely flexible, any place, budget to suit you, bite-sized chunks, one hit altogether, whatever you like, revisit the material, tailor the cost to suit yourself. You want an expensive course, there are plenty of them out there. There are also plenty of low-cost courses. Mine tend, by the way, to be from zero to about 45 pounds, averaging somewhere in the middle. You can make it personal to you. You can tailor your training, tailor your learning with 
an online course or with several online courses and you can back it up with free stuff from all over the web because there's an unlimited range out there there's a huge amount of expertise that can be transmitted to you and those are the five great benefits and let's add a sixth health and well-being never underestimate keep learning folks it's great it's good for you it's good for the universe and it's good for those around you all the best Um, some people are a little bit daunted by the notion of doing something online. So I'm preparing a, a separate little video showing you, demonstrating online, how to use one of my courses. And everybody else's courses work pretty much on the same basis. So if you're unsure at all about what's involved in actually accessing a course on Teachable or one of the other platforms and actually enjoying these short, bite-sized uh, lectures that I and other people present, then I'll be showing you in a separate video. Look out for it. Sign up for the uh, for the newsletter if you if you want to be absolutely sure. Look out for it on my blog www.barrywimbolt.com, and um, that will take you through step by step and show you how to complete a course. So you can always practice on one of the free courses before you spend your money. And by the way, finally, finally, selling, selling, selling. I always give a free money back guarantee. If you sign up for a course within 28 days, you're not happy with it, get me in, get in touch with me and you can have your money back. No questions asked. Except that I'd like to know what you're not happy with because maybe it'll help me improve the courses in the future. But I won't give you grief about it. I'll just return your money. Very happy to do that if it doesn't suit you. All the best. Over and out.